Frank lost 100,000 euros in a night. His shop was one of dozens in Marseille, broken into by rioters who stripped the shelves. The store was full of merchandise, he tells me. Now it's completely empty. Gangs rampage through France's second city through the night. Their aim, seemingly theft and destruction. Their target, whatever they could get their hands on. Frank's store was hit twice. After clearing the shop floor, they returned on Saturday morning and robbed the stockroom. Protests which began over the death of a teenager have morphed into something else. The death of Niall is very sad, but it's just pretext, Frank says. A pretext for robbing a shop. From designer stores to independent shops, everyone was a target hunting rifles from this store among the loot. The theft from this weapons store adds another complication for the authorities here, because now they've got a group of protesters with a stash of arms running around the city. Jenny blames the government for the unrest. She believes a lack of opportunities, poverty, and the ghettoization of Marseille's migrant population have stoked the anger. It's government who've done everything to arrive at this because uh, they park all these young people and parents in Cité and after they are really in a, uh, they are not happy so they want to come here and break everything. When do you think this is going to stop? They are going to continue because they, they don't they don't done all the shops so I think they are sleeping there. <laughs> And after, they come and they finish the, the work. With a rerun expected, extra police and armoured trucks have been sent in as reinforcement. Public transport stopping early. Car parks will be closed. But these political sticking plasters may halt the violence. They won't heal France's deeper social wounds. Siobhan Robbins, Sky News, Marseille.